Hello everyone. So this class is about the lesson that I sent this week that is redundancy. So what do I mean by redundancy? Um, suppose I say small in size. So once I am saying small, again I am saying in size. Small means it is definitely small in size. Large in means it is large. I don't need to say large in size. Um, either I can say it's the truth or it's a fact. So if you open this, I share my screen with you. So if you open this, what is redundancy, you'll find Something went wrong. I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> if you look at this video, uh, sorry, this article, you'll see that what what I mean by redundancy. I like this. Basics and fundamentals are two different things. Either I say and two similar things. Either I say, go back to your fundamentals or go back to your basics. Generally it is said, go back to your basics. Check your fundamentals or go back to your basis, but both mean the same. You may have heard or may have used this expression that she is very beautiful. Beautiful is the extreme level. You say beautiful means that is nothing beyond you. Again, adding a very, I mean, it is a redundant phrase that is, it is a redundant word that is used. Evolve over time. Evolve means to develop, to grow, which happens over time. Again, adding over time is consensus or opinion. Consensus is, means opinion, which has been supported by most of the people. So these, are, uh, I mean, these are certain things that are there, like past history, past and history. It's something which we would like to say it's pretty, something pretty much in the past that is quite long past, but that is past and then history. Obviously history is past or past is history, but we often go on and see these things. Next, I'll uh, share with you certain common redundancies that we should be avoiding in any languages to help you go and check out these. I, I have given some, you see, I have not removed the uh, hyperlinks here. You can go into these sites and check out the redundancies or the uh, rhetorical strategies of refer reference, sorry, repetition that is there. And you'll have more examples, but uh, here are certain common ones that are there. I have added a long list so that you can understand properly. Absolutely and essential. Essential means it is absolutely necessary. So instead of saying absolutely essential, you say absolutely necessary or you just say essential. Um, again, absolutely necessary is also called a redundant phrase. Advanced and forward, advanced planning. Planning means something which you do in advance. Add and then up. These words we often use, but these are all redundant words. De descriptive and in value, depreciate in value. Appreciate means the value to go down. Descent means to go down. Uh, desirable benefits. Benefits means something which is desirable and which will be helpful. So if you go into this, um, sorry, this chart, you'll find that I have given um, alphabetically there are up to W, X, Y, Z, I did not find such similar words. I mean, this is a more or less exhaustive list that I have shared with you. Next comes 
examples of redundancies. I share the examples of redundancies with you. Um, examples of redundancy in English when you are writing or talking in English. In my opinion, and then you use the word I. In my opinion, I is not necessary. Collaborate means to work together. Again, together is not necessary. Past experience, experience means that you have gathered in the past, so it is not uh, necessary here. I have added a chart form here. Instead of saying this, try saying this. Instead of saying 12 midnight, just say midnight. Instead of saying 12 noon, just say noon. Instead of saying a total of 14 birds, 14 birds. Biography of a life, biography is someone's life, so biography. Instead of circling around, just say circle. Instead of, in the event of, in the event that, means if. So just use if, instead of using such a long phrase, in spite of the fact that although new innovations, innovations are new, so revert back is not, not, not revert back, but revert shorter or longer in length is just shorter and longer. So be concise. Be, if you are concise, people understand that you understood the language properly and that is why you have gone ahead and not used all the superfluous words, but has been talking about them in the way that it is necessary. Uh, next is how to avoid redundancy. So three types of uh, redundant writing are explained here. Um, one is you ex excessively describe something. It actually, what it does is it stops the flow of the prose. Your prose gets hampered. Um, it appears as if you're trying to hammer home one thing and then you are missing out on the rest of of the thing. You have put so much pressure, pressure on one particular uh, expression that the rest of the line or rest of the paragraph becomes dull and loses it, its importance. It often contradicts or undermines what you are trying to do with your writing. It suggests an amateur quality of writing. This is something which we would like to avoid. We are not amateurs. We are all pretty advanced in our writing. We have advanced in our thinking, experienced people. So these are this is something which no one should feel when they read our texts. Um, here there's a there's a young boy, a child in fact, as a four year old kid he was not uh, not yet an adult, I mean, not necessarily. We can understand what his age is. You don't have to go into such a long drawn thing that 48 month old, which is 12 months more than 36 and one year more than three, not necessary. Uh, the overly ripe uh, banana leaf before, uh, it was dark in color and soft to the touch. It wasn't ripe any longer. It was ripe a few days ago. It wasn't ripe now. Bananas are ripe, we, uh, overly ripe. We can understand that. Uh, next is personally, I have never been able to do that. Do that. Speaking for myself, it is not in my nature. We get it. Your experience, you are expressing your opinion and your concerns. How do you avoid that? Um, if you are writing a story, if you are writing a mother's deepest concern um, talking about uh, the child of the sorry the age of the child in such a longish way may be somewhat important but not uh, even then these last three sentences i don't get it but still in such a context it may be okay it may be okay not not fine but just okay uh, Provide a description, but do not overdo it. When you're overdo it, doing it, you miss the entire thing. We stop listening after a certain time or a reading after a certain time. We just jump those areas. Uh, second 
experience is using two or more words or phrases that both serve the same purpose this is something which i have been giving examples of more is uh, given here just go ahead and check them out and how to avoid them is um by thinking by rereading uh, going a little bit slow at least at the initial stages of when you are writing can help you avoid them other form of redundancy is like technical redundancy uncreative return repetition these are certain things which happens when you are not uh, really practiced in writing something so um, i mean uh, you are repeating yourself as a result you are repeating yourself and as a result you are not even aware of what you are doing next uh, thing that i will be sharing is avoiding redundancies in writing what to do how to uh, i mean go ahead in, with them avoiding using double negatives um, sometimes sometimes very uh, few times and in the hands of very expert writers using double negatives gives a um, real emphasis a real boost and uh, it is appreciative but it has to be very expert writer who can really pull this off she is not unattractive uh, this is a double negative and uh, no one should overdo this using it once in a uh, entire chapter of 10 15 20 pages is okay but not more than that uh, be aware of uh, pleonasm is uh, 12 midnight 3 am um and then in the morning and these are these pleonasms are not necessary be careful when you are using abbreviations like uh, sometimes we say cpu unit the u of the unit cpu is unit so you don't need to add the unit or you say cp unit atm machine is not necessary atm the last m is a machine so when you are using these abbreviations be be very cautious about what you are saying uh, be conscious of the language origin so um, like latin word annum or um, is has been translated as anniversary and um, then people said use the words 25th year anniversary year means annum anniversary means annum so both of them are not necessary either say anniversary or say annum remove unnecessary phrases and always observe that less is more so this is something which you have to always remember that less is more avoiding redundancy just a moment next last article that i shared is how to write consciously and avoid redundancies this is a uh, what should i say a summation and a little bit uh, addition needless avoid needless repetition this last paragraph and the pa two or three paragraphs before that be careful of overuse of adverbs these are the two paragraphs that you would need to be careful about the top part of it is mostly known by you just a little bit of uh, stories are added so go go ahead and check that and while you are checking that i would also like to share sorry some assignments that have given that i have given you the assignments are not of redundancies this is something which you will receive uh, which you have already received much ahead of the a class that is there so what i have given is i have given an assignment of last week's lesson that is on cliche in cliche you have to find out that most of the uh, sentences or phrases that i have given you are all clichés what you have to do is um you have to go ahead and write something different either one word or a group of words which will not be the cliche but will be a different um, 
aspect of the same thing. Don't overuse this cliche is as you remember is an overusing of a certain expression which has been used so long, so many times that it has become, um, I mean, we have stopped enjoying the use of that. Last but not the least is, I have shared a video with you. Um, so redundant phrases and all these things, a video which will help you, give you more interest. That is why I have added this. So go ahead and, and look at the video. See if you can get a little bit clearer idea about what I have been saying. This uh, lesson ends here. We have been talking about lots of redundancies. So redundancies are something which should be avoided when we are writing. Um, try and use them in your writing and at the same time, try to remember it so that when I give you exercise or assignment next week, you can go ahead and do it very nicely. Okay, so bye for now. If you have any questions, just send me a message. I'll make, give replies or if necessary, I'll make a video and send it up to you.